Hey folks, how's it going? Chris here from Extra Games and Collectibles, back with part two of my San Diego Comic-Con coverage. As always, a finger on the pulse, dealing with the hot, hot news. San Diego Comic-Con was literally weeks ago now, but here I am, ready to talk about some more collectible goodness that caught my eye from the convention. Part one was exclusively G.I. Joe classified series, but this installment today is just going to be a more general look at some of the things that caught my eye from the coverage coming out of the com. So stick around for six seconds and let's get into it. Yes, folks, San Diego Comic-Con. It was so exciting. I'm still talking about it all this time later. And, you know, sincerely, by the time I've got it finished up and all, completed all the recording, got it edited and posted, it's going to be well over three weeks since the event took place in San Diego. Uh, so sorry for the regular viewers, those of you who you know, expressed an interest in my thoughts on things that are revealed. Um, nothing if not timely here at Mod Extra Games and Collectibles, keeping my finger on the pulse of the hottest of... <laughs> like I said in the G.I. Joe Classified series vid for about the uh, San Diego Comic Con reveals there, real life just gets in the way of nerd life sometimes, and that's just the way it goes, you know. But uh, I've stayed the course, got my head down. Here's the video. It's coming your way. And it's going to just be a more general overview of top picks from the sort of man-child collectible arena that have caught my eye, turned my head, pricked my ears up. Uh, from the, the kind of wider selection of stuff that's available at the con. G.I. Joe Classified Series, that's like my main line in action figures that I'm collecting right now, but there's a few that I dip my toe into, and so uh, I've just noted down a few bits. You know, as the news was, was trickling out and the photos were hitting the socials and such that I thought, mm, yeah, I like the look of that, or I'd like to talk about that. Although, word of warning, spoiler alert, it's going to be difficult for me not to be a little bit critical a few times, but I promise you it will be, at minimum, constructive, you know. So, uh, yeah, there we go. So that's not, uh, that's a lot of waffle, a big waffly intro, but let's get into it and let's get started with, yeah, let's go for something in the action figure line. Let's do one of the chunkier pieces to talk about. And that's going to be this, Marvel Legends, and specifically the X-Men 97 reveals that took place at San Diego Comic-Con. Regulars around this channel will know that the vast majority of my Marvel Legends collecting is focused on the X-Men characters, because I have a strong nostalgic connection to 90s X-Men, both the cartoon and uh, 90s X-Men comic books. And, of course, like many man-child nerds of that age i am super excited about the new upcoming animated series the revival that's coming to disney plus in i don't know when is it coming end of this year early next year something like that i don't know uh, but anyway the uh, x-men 97 figure so there's a little peek at the characters of course that are coming in the cartoon it's exciting on that front uh, but i like seeing new x-men figures although I use that phrase cautiously because it's not really new X-Men <laughs> figures, is it? Let's, it's not all roses with these. Uh, I mean, the Gambit, for example, is... Well, it's the retro car back Gambit with a, uh, a slightly more animated-looking head chucked on, on the body. And it's, uh, you know, the book, the articulation. I've owned the retro card Gambit for a matter of years now, so uh, I don't think I'll be picking this one up. The Rogue... Is the fact that the knee-high boots are now glued on enough of an improvement? It's still single elbow joints and what have you. I don't know. The uh, the the Magneto there. I don't own a Magneto, so I'm kind of tempted by it. But it is from the Family Values pack, so it's going to be the old book with the old articulation. And uh, as many have observed, he's got those weirdly long arms, which I don't know what that's all about. And um, what else is there? Storm. That's effectively again. A reissue of the retro card bat one with a new head dropped on it with no discernible improvements other than the head sculpt. The Wolverine looks great, but, you know, people have got a bazillion Wolverines. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that's basically the animated series version without the um, cell shading. I suppose if you're not a fan of cell shading, that would appeal to you greatly. Although I do like the, uh, the metallic um, exit ports for the, um, for the claws. Uh, I've got to give credit where credit's due. I suppose the only one that really caught my eye was Bishop, because Bishop's really hard to get hold of in Marvel Legends. I suspect, although I don't know for sure, someone let me know in the comments down below if this has been confirmed somewhere, but that that's going to be a newer, maybe the Vulcan book or something, so the articulation's going to be a little bit better. 
Would I have liked a more 90s looking one with the uh, longer dreadlocked hair? Yeah, of course I would, but I don't have a bishop at all. And this looks decent. I quite like it. So um, that's caught my eye. So it definitely caught my eye because I'm excited about the X-Men 97, but oh geez i don't know it's uh there's a lot to be unhappy about especially with the you know the black widow and the articulation on the black widow thinking of the, the female figures um that they are previewing right now that's a little bit of a disappointment and maybe even slightly taking the piss a little bit but uh yeah i'm, I'm always going to pay attention to more x-men you know what i mean in marvel legends x-men are my jam man and there were a few other bits in marvel legends but i suppose some of my comments on the x-men 97 figures there are indicative of my overall general feeling about marvel legends at the moment so if you look at the clear for example i mean i wouldn't have picked up a clear anyway but the the, the color scheme and the paint application on the legs looks actually pretty cool it's a fun looking figure but still single jointed elbow still that weird sort of stretched out lycra with no depth no texture to it so it's missing just a little certain x factor it's like it's 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 boring now it doesn't move it doesn't change it doesn't improve it's not you know especially when you look at the the black widow you know the the new uh, 60th anniversary like super articulated female book but there were a couple of things that caught my eye so the uh, fist ninja is it the fist ninja the ninja i'll check uh, i should have looked i'm looking at my notes i just wrote ninja so the ninja the red hooded ninja dude looks kind of interesting it's a you know generic army builder villain that you could use in all sorts of displays and stuff so if you're a photographer or you're making dioramas and stuff uh, th this has just got a, a range of uh, you know, possibility and usefulness uh, i like the uh, skull headed version in the hood little bit bit sinister nice and of course it has got the depth and texture and stuff going on as well as a, a decent range of articulation so yeah that one definitely caught my eye and i, th I might pick one up um but it, it'd be the kind i'd sort of wait and see if it ended up peg warming and going cheap somewhere not that you find an army builder peg warming going cheap anywhere here in the uk that'll sell out on pre-order i'm sure of it <laughs> <laughs> the blade is kind of fun as well like i said before if i do buy anything outside of the x-men it's it's got to be a good solid classic look sort of a-list character and i would i would consider blade that i like the way the coat the inside of the coat has got this really nice red lining i like the face sculpt with the shouty vampire teeth thing going on he's got a couple of stakes in his accessory selection that's fun so yeah blade has turned my head and is possibly of interest so yeah that's a kind of fun one and then a, a, a classic 70s looking luke cage which is awesome you know with the big yellow shirt and the, the the chain around his waist the chain belt and stuff looks really great looks really interesting i love retro stuff and this is retro as all hell i have to admit though like i associate luke cage through my comic reading time as the uh, uh, as the skinheaded guy with the tight black t-shirts and stuff but this still looks really cool and were they to have released a, a classic look Iron Fist alongside this that I'd have been all over it. Uh, I feel like these uh, would meet my sort of classic look mainline rule for the shelf uh, and I would consider picking up a Luke Cage here. Uh, I've, I've not paid a great deal of attention to what his articulation and stuff is like. I think there has been a bit of discussion floating around on the socials about how well he will or will not be able to move but again this one's sort of on the on the secondary list up for consideration maybe in the future if I see it going in a game sale or something because uh, yeah it's retro it's cool I love retro stuff. Now, uh, the other main kind of superhero line, DC Comics, uh, sorry, uh, McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, I also dip my toe into. In fact, I'm, I'd argue I'm a larger DC fanboy than I am a, a Marvel fanboy. And I've said many times on this channel, that when there, particularly when there's a classic look, kind of core Justice League character that is released, or a, you know, a classic Batman, Superman character, I'm all over it. And in amongst the wide selection of crazy color scheme balmy paint applications and uh yeah movie tie-in stuff like I have no interest in a Batman and Robin wave, for example, but uh, there was a handful of classic look characters in there. So uh, there was a Firestorm that caught my eye, good classic look Firestorm uniform that would look great in the sort of growing um, 80s stroke 90s uh, Justice League 
thing that I'm building in my DC Multiverse collection. Uh, the one everybody's talking about, of course, is the long overdue classic look Wonder Woman figure. Uh, which we've only seen a digital render of so far. In fact, just uh, very quickly, shout out to Toyshiz, which is where these uh, shots of the Todd McFarlane uh, presentation, the, from the PowerPoint slides from his presentation, are from. So uh, thanks for getting the news out, Toyshiz. I appreciate your work. Um, so we've only seen digital renders of those so far, but my, my, my DC Trinity, you know, Superman, Batman and Wonder Woman, has long been absence of a, a Wonder Woman that's caught my eye. Not, not a big fan of the movie tie-in ones, and m most other Wonder Womans have been, you know, the, the toddiest of toddy versions because he, he likes to grapple onto the corners of the DC multiverse that he can spawnify the most with spikes and chains and, and what have you. So it'd be nice to see this. Now, this is an interesting one because it's part of a wave that's an NFT wave. There's a Batman and Aquaman included in it um, where they're going to come with this digital NFT collectible element there. I, I don't think Todd's the driving force behind this, actually, because I'm a trading card collector as well, and I've noticed in the HRO DC trading cards, this whole NFT tie-in thing has been going on. So I suspect that Warner Brothers and, and DC are the driving force behind that decision. Uh, I'm indifferent about it, really. I couldn't care less. I just hope that the inclusion of an NFT collectible is not going to impact on the figure price too much, because one of the attractive elements of uh, DC Multiverse is the price point you get a hell of a lot of figure for what you're paying uh, and while they fall short a little bit sometimes for me in terms of articulation you can't argue with the quality of the sculpt for the money you put down so uh, the wonder woman and the firestorm and there were a couple of others as well the Catman, which has already gone up for pre-order and i was on youtube um uh, last night and there's there's some folks in north america already had the pre-orders shipped so the Catman, awesome very pleased to see that massive fan of the uh, gail simone secret six comic book and she really did some great stuff with the Catman thomas blake character there um, and maneuvered him into this really interesting sort of uh, anti-hero space so great to see a Catman figure and a classic look riddler too um that will fit very nicely with my growing kind of batman space there because i'm very despite the amount of batman stuff that uh, Todd McFarlane puts out I'm very selective and that's that's a that's a good classic I was pointing in the wrong direction there that's a good classic looking character that that suits my tastes in that space so yeah a couple of DC multiverse things that caught my eye as well all right getting into it in the middle here is confession time ladies and gents it is confession time it's me I'm I'm the guy I, I, I'm that individual that you've all been talking about. You know, when you ask those questions on the Star Wars Black Series fan sites and social pages, and you say, who's buying these Christmas versions of Black Series? What mad person is enjoying these? It, It's me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's probably ended my entire YouTube career talking about action figure collectibles, but I love them. I think they're loads of fun. They're great. Uh, I get I get the ones out that I've got already at Christmas time. They they start to. Um, I get these little displays put together in December of uh, seasonally themed characters and the Black Series ones are a great addition to my little seasonal themed stuff that I've got going on. <laughs> so it's me sorry folks it's me and i really like this this uh blue uh mandalorian character i think that'll look great next to my uh boba fett my uh, christmas boba fett that i've already got and i really like this nutcracker one as well the uh the nutcracker one looks great uh the the promotional photo with the uh, uh with the mouse droid just sold it to me straight away. Now, I'm probably not going to go in on the whole wave, but there's a good chance I'll be picking up those two to grow my uh, little Christmas action figure or Christmassy collectible display for sure. <laughs> it's awesome. I've got like a Lego Santa Claus that goes in there and things. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, I just wanted to swing by and talk about the Nacelle Biker Mice from Mars because I put a video out a couple of months ago when they first announced these and we saw the digital renders uh, being a little critical actually and saying like the articulation looks pants and uh, I don't think they're good enough and blah, 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 blah. And now seeing some of the uh, articulation improvements that they've, you know, they've responded to that feedback, not from me directly, just broadly from the 
community. They've responded to that feedback and expanded the articulation range. They've revealed the motorbikes, which is a big part of the kind of narrative storytelling piece with the, you know, the biker mice from Mars, and they look really good. And I've got to say, maybe I was a little bit too quick to be harsh with my words. Is it there entirely? Nah, I'm not convinced that it is. Um, I'd still think the, uh, you know, the torso and waist articulation is a bit lacking. Uh, well, there is no torso articulation, and uh, the waist is just a, an old school swivel kind of thing. Uh, but credit where credit's due, they they have responded to community feedback on the early digital render releases. The in hand versions that they were showing off at San Diego Comic Con do look you know, much, much better, much more eye-catching. And for someone like me who has a strong nostalgic connection to the Bike of Mice from Mars, as a cartoon I enjoyed greatly as a, as a youngster, um, I was like, no, I'm not going to order them. In fact, I haven't at this point, but maybe I will now. Maybe I will, although they're hard to... I was looking around the other day. There's not a great deal of retailers over here pre-ordering them, and those that are doing are either sold out or they're doing them as a three-pack. You've got to buy all three of the characters. Uh, so there you go. Oh, and uh, if the, the digital renders here, they're obviously promotional shots, but if I include the uh, the cabinet pickies, then they came from Toy Arc. So thank you to Toy Arc again for getting the news out and showing off the goods. Now, one line that I've only just started this year, but um, it's... it's, it's showing off some good stuff and i think i'll be carrying on is the necker dungeons and dragons range i picked up a war duke a couple of months back i've got strong heart on pre-order and at the event they showed another new character which was elkhorn the dwarf which looks great looks really awesome uh, again got to give the credit the photo credit there so let me just check in my notes that's from mcu collector's instagram page so thank you mcu collector but yeah it looks awesome uh they i mean they're typically necker there is that more brittle plastic the articulation is not mind-blowing but the sculpts are just oh, amazing and i really enjoy the sculpts i've long wanted a bit more kind of sword and sorcery fantasy in my collection um and stuff like uh, uh, mythic Mythic Legions is just a little bit too outside the price range and a little bit too difficult to get hold of here in the United Kingdom uh, for me to go for, whereas this is a, li a little bit more prevalent and while still necker expensive, not so far out the price range that, um, you know, like the, the Mythic Legion stuff's like 60 quid plus over here, um, whereas I can get that for about 35 from an independent retailer, which is a lot better. So, yeah, great. So, loving a dwarf uh, to add to the collection. That will be the, the third figure um, as they as they kind of drip through on the pre orders. And uh, yeah, I like the look of that one. That turned my head, caught my eye. Uh, I initially saw it actually on a Pixel Dan video uh, when he was doing a, a cabinet. Uh, kind of walk through with uh, a member of staff there at the Necker stand and I was like oh and I went googling and nobody was talking about it and then I came across uh, the MCU collectors uh, picky there on his uh, from the Instagram page so thank you MCU collector but yeah awesome I'm, I'm really into it they, they, I mean go check out the Wardupe review I was blown away by the sculpting and the paint applications and stuff really amazing a very enjoyable figure and Wardupe has actually Got a permanent, you can't see him on camera, but he's all the way up there. Look, just keeping an eye on things. He keeps an eye on everything from up there. Right, what else is in my notebook? Let's have a look here now. Got me my Batman notebook here where I make, keep notes, all my nerdy notes for the channel. And uh, what's next? Ah, Gentle Giant. So I like the Marvel uh, animated style, um, uh, kind of chibi style, uh, Scotty Young inspired statues by Gentle Giant. I've got a small collection there. You can just see uh, some of the legs of a few of them on that white bit of shelf there. And uh, they had a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive available, which was a chrome Silver Surfer. The looks sweet, looks really sweet. Now, it's outside of my price range. It was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. They have made it available on their own website, but it's 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 a little bit more expensive. I mean, they're generally quite expensive anyway, but they made it a little bit more expensive um, than they usually are. So I'm probably not going to pick it up, but I did you know, have a little drool over some pictures that I saw of this guy. Uh, we knew about it. We knew it was coming up. They revealed it before the convention. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to uh, give a little tip of the hat to the Gentle Giant folks because I love that whole Scotty Young range. Uh, they're bringing out, a, they've got a few new figures uh, on available for pre-order this year that have caught my eye. Uh, uh, and this one, the Chrome version. I mean, look at it. Look at it there, doesn't it? Look, just like really, well, really, really sweet in that shiny chrome uh, i suspect there'll be a um a less exciting paint application version coming down the pipeline 
Uh, but yeah, like that one. Like that one a lot. Caught my eye. And then finally, to bring us to a close, I'm going to go back to G.I. Joe, which is a bit naughty because I've already done a G.I. Joe video from San Diego Comic Con. But something that caught my eye that I was intrigued about was the uh, Super 7 trading card set. It's, it's only a small set. It's um, like 24 foil cards and 24 non-foil cards. Uh, they, they were putting them up for sale at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, but I noticed that there's not been a great deal of information about whether these will be for wider general release. Uh, on, on the Super 7 website, they are sold out entirely. I've seen a few going on the secondary market for uh, an incredible markup, like far too expensive for a uh, you know a small a small set like that especially when you're trying to get them from blind bags um but i'm a trading card guy as well that is a combination of two of my most favorite things gi joe and trading cards uh, and while super seven on the action figure side don't appeal to me a great deal some of their sort of ancillary merchandise things like this are, are usually of a good quality uh, and catch my eye so i'd be very interested to know if anybody out there has heard some news or caught on the wind um uh, any information about whether these are going to be up for general release how how available will they be and um, when that might happen uh, if at all or just put me out of my misery and let me know that they've said that that's it you know they were just an exclusive and that's the end of the story and i'll, I'll stop worrying about it then uh but yeah it's uh, i love collecting trading cards i get a great thrill out of it there's a few trading card videos on this channel although i don't do them quite as frequently as like the action figure stuff because uh well, I'm just not buying as many sets, trading card sets, as I used to. Um, but, uh, yeah, just caught up again. This is uh, my picks, and that's a pick that caught my eye. I love a, a good, well-put-together trading card set with great artwork, and that looked like it was a well-put-together trading card set with great artwork, especially with, you know, if you've got foil versions, oh, nothing gets a trading card collector going more than, you know, lenticular or foil or chrome versions of the cards. Yes, please, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and i'll bring that on to a close there folks because as usual with my videos i've probably gone on far too long uh there were the, there's a bazillion of other things that i saw coming out that um uh, i could have maybe spoken about like what's acid rain i don't know what acid rain is but there was this incredible like uh cyborg samurai dude on an akira style motorbike that, that i saw and i was like wow that looks amazing i mean it looks like a great i don't know what it is i think an action figure line uh based on a on a kind of uh, on a on a manga or, a, or 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 even I think it might even just be a world created for itself being told through the you know narrative being told through the action figures. Um, well, whatever it is, it looked amazing. So yeah, whatever Acid Rain is, um, well done. I don't think I'll be picking it up, but it looked great. You know, and lots of other bits and bobs, uh, tons of stuff for uh, you know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fans. And I hear there's good stuff for the wrestling fans and the Thundercats fans and the Masters of the Universe fans. There's plenty of stuff out there. It's just they're just not in my wheelhouse. So there's tons of other stuff I could have covered, but you know, I'm got the I'm got the time on the inclination today so thanks so much for coming and checking out this video especially because it was so late and like really old news um you could have chosen a million other channels to be watching today and you chose mine and for that i'm very grateful i really appreciate you guys thank you so much by the way for getting me over the 900 subscriber mark that is just oh, i'm buzzing you, you really are filling this uh, this man child nerd's life with joy because i never thought in a million years i'd have 900 plus people around the world not only watching my videos the viewing figures are pretty good at the minute but um like want to subscribe and know and regularly watch my videos that's just mind-bending to me and so uh, I'm, I'm i'm just blessed so blessed and grateful uh, to those of you who make more extra games and collectibles a, a regular pit stop on your youtube viewing so thank you very much all right uh yeah let's close that down there so i hope you guys have a great day and you know come back around for another video sometime soon i'd love to have you all right see you later folks